All right. In this module, we're going to talk about the last stage of annealing, grain growth. All right. So grain growth is as it sounds. The grains continue to grow. And so here's the image of the, um, the structure right after it's completely consumed those prior grains that were cold worked. And so we have these really, really small grains. Well, those really small grains um, are still have a lot of grain boundary area, uh, which is uh, a defect, which we talked about the defect chapter. Um, and so that is a source of energy, high energy in the, in the material. And so to reduce that energy, the grains will grow and with larger grains, we'll have lower grain boundary area and therefore lower grain, grain boundary energy. So at elevated temperatures, grains tend to always grow just to, to re, uh, remove that grain boundary area. That's always a, a driving force. So after recrystallization, which we define as right when all of the prior grains are consumed, um, then from that point on is known as grain growth. And so here you can see at eight seconds at eight uh, for this experiment, that's what happened. And then after 15 minutes, those grains have grown. Uh, some of them are larger. Some of them basically disappear uh, as the larger ones continue to grow. And again, the driving force here is the reduction in grain boundary area. And the grain growth, uh, we can actually define as an empirical relationship. And again, that's observed uh, relationship um, that we see. And we can see that the diameter of a grain at any time um, related to its initial diameter uh, by it, uh, an exponent, in this case uh, n, and that can be close to 2, uh, is equal to uh, a coefficient of the material and temperature. So this is basically a constant. Um, and then time. So basically it has this second order relationship in this case. So that just kind of defines the, the growth rate. All right, so how does this happen? And so let's kind of look at an atomic view. So here on the, the left, we have a grain. Here on the right, we have another grain. And in between, we have a boundary, right? This is a grain boundary. You can see it's kind of loose and things aren't in the proper positions, right? And so what can happen is, um, depending on which direction the flow is, you can get uh, atoms going from one atom to the next. So for example, in this case, all the atoms are transferred to the right grain. And so you can see the one here, which is attached to the left grain, is jumping over uh, the boundary and connecting or attaching to a site um, on the surface of that grain. Um, and you can see it's going into that position, so it's the proper position. And so anywhere that that happens, that jump happens, um, you're basically making this grain larger, and you're basically disappearing or making this grain smaller. So uh, when we have grain growth, what happens is some grains will enlarge or grow, and then others will basically be consumed to make that happen. And it relies on this atomic diffusion in the opposite direction of the grain boundary migrating. So essentially the grain boundary is moving uh, over here. Uh, so that's kind of the process by which it happens. So it has to happen by diffusion and diffusion is actually faster because you, we talked about how this area is looser, right? There's not as much um, atoms, there's a lot more empty space. And so atomic motion is actually faster in the grain boundary. So that has tend to be faster than diffusion in this area. All right, so again, the driving force for grain growth is the reduction in the total energy caused by the decrease in boundary area as those grains grow. So you go from this, which has a lot of grain boundaries between all these small grains, to this, where we have uh, less grain boundaries between these much larger areas. Because again, grain boundaries are defects, so decreasing the amount will decrease the energy of the system. And so if left unchecked at this elevated temperature after gra uh, recrystallization, grains will always tend to grow uh, is what this is kind of showing us.